All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to more patch notes. So, we're back. It's been a while, it definitely has. They've spaced this patch, I'd say a decent amount of time after 9.13. This song is also extremely loud, let me lower it. And do this. Okay, there we go. But anyway, we also have not only this patch notes to go over, but Teamfight Tactics as well. Now, I've been playing Teamfight Tactics, and I'm going to be honest, I started off really strong, but, oh sweet Jesus, but I've been kind of like sucking dick as of recently. So, we'll, we'll quickly go over those patch notes, and I'll just give my opinion. I'm not going to go over them as in-depth as I would these, even though I kind of play TFT more than regular League at this point. Because I completed all the missions. Anyway, let's see what Riot has to say. Oh, also, we'll um, go over my opinions on the new project skins. But anyway, hey all, we're finally at the halfway point of the season. Wow, that's actually crazy to think that we're halfway. Uh, how's your rank, your ranked climb going? Not well. How are your TFT games going? Not well. For more details on the schedule for future patches for the remainder of the year... Oh, wait, they have a schedule? What the fuck? Wait, let me see this. Wait, League of Legends patch schedule. League of Legends periodically releases patches that include fixes, improvements, and new content. Below are the planned schedules for 2019. Wait, we never had this before. What the fuck? Wait a minute. Okay, wait. Where are we at now? We're at 9.14 coming tomorrow. Then... 17... So then in two weeks, we get 9.15... And another two weeks, we get 16. Another two weeks, 17, 18, 19. Wait, this is so cool. What the fuck? We actually get dates for all of them. And the last patch is 9.24. They planned that far ahead. Holy shit. That's crazy. Anyway, back to the meat. The meat of the subject at hand. Let me make sure I'm not muted. Okay, good. Ooh, that would have been bad. Anyway, uh, during this patch, we're introducing certain counter mechanics to some champions' existing abilities. Oh, wait, so this is the mid-patch. Oh, shit. So, for those of you who don't know, traditionally, League has a lot of big major patches, right? The biggest major patch of the entire year is probably either preseason or the patch coming straight off of preseason. That introduces the most change to League of Legends. The one after that, though, is probably the mid-season patch. I'm wondering if this is it. We'll probably see. I'm assuming this might be it. Who the fuck is messaging me on Discord? Oh, no, no, I just got a notification. Okay. Anyway. Onward. Uh, our general thought. Having natural counters to common and powerful effects in the game will help make it healthier in the long run. This is what they say for every goddamn thing in this game. It needs to have a counter. They want this game to be a rock, paper, scissors sort of thing, but it ends up just being a rock, paper sort of thing, and then... One is just raping the other. And there's no counterplay to whatever is, like, doing the raping. Anyway. Um, and as part of the overarching Summoner's Rift balance strategy, we want to continue encouraging diversity in lane picks. But once it happens, they want to nerf it, a.k.a. mages in the bot lane. Anyway. Hopefully, the existence of these count. Oh, shit, wait. I forgot to tell you guys my palette for today. So I just got home from work, and my first meal of the day is Cheez-Its Snapped. Cheesy, thin, and crispy double cheese. And I'm enjoying it very much. Anyway. I digress. Hopefully, the existence of these counters also introduces a slew of not-as-present champions in the mix at all levels of play. Impossible. That's never going to happen in pro play. We were very selective in the champions we chose to add these mechanics to. Oh, shit, new mechanics. Keeping in mind their status in the game currently, we believe in the long term these additions will make pros draft priorities more robust. Interesting. So, with these points in mind, here are the counters that we will be adding in specific to champions in 914. Anti-shield, which they had on Aatrox. Anti-healing which a couple of champions already have. Flat damage reduction, which I believe only... Sona and Exhaust give you. 
Exhaust? Oh no, wait, does Exhaust give it? No, it doesn't, I don't think, anymore. Exhaust used to lessen the amount of... Wait, no, it might. It might still do it. I don't know. I know it slows for sure. At least I hope it still does. They gutted Exhaust. I don't know what it is now, but Exhaust used to be it lowered your MR and armor, so you would be doing more damage to whoever got exhausted. They would get slowed, and they would do less damage. It was insane how good that shit was. And now it's a shell of its former self. But anyway, Sona has it with her W. If she has the third stack on her passive, and she Ws, and she autos you with the W uh, green aura, you actually do less damage. And no one really uses it or knows about it. Improvements to true sight mechanics and anti-mobility. So just hard CC, okay. These changes are, la are the last planned round of significant pattern level or mechanic updates on the champions before the end of the season. Okay, so does the mid-patch. Nice. Okay, let's see. And then we have the new skins. Demacian Vice, Garen, and Lashian. I think they're really good skins. I like the nostalgia factor on them. I'm personally not going to get them, but they're pretty good. I actually really like them. Okay, and team fight tactics. We'll go over that after, quickly. Okay, anti-shielding champions. Blitzcrank and Renekton are the choices, apparently. Uh, break damage absorbing shields. How does it do that? R now destroys shields on enemies before dealing damage. And wow, holy shit. Wait, so Blitzcrank is a hard counter now to Janna and Locket. Holy fuck. Renekton, now W, now breaks shields on targets before dealing damage and something. So no matter what, the shield isn't going to take anything. It's just going to be removed. That is crazy. Holy shit. What the fuck? Oh, this one has to be empowered, though. Okay. And this one's on the ult, so... Okay, so you're not going to get it too often. Like, for this, you need to be empowered, and for this, you need to waste the ult that's on one minute. But still, that's that's interesting. I'm actually really interested that they're adding these sort of things. They're actually putting in hard counters now to certain champions. Okay, here we go. Katarina. Or er, anti-healing. While all other current healing reduction sources in the game cap out at 40%, yeah, they do. Katarina and Kled will be at 60. Holy wow so yeah katarina already gave healing reduction on her ult but now it's even more honestly does this change anything is this gonna make katarina a must-have pick no because the healing reduction doesn't last too long and it's on her ult it's good to have but it's not like a game changer honestly and Cled, q pull now applies healing reduction that is really good oh my god it's for five fucking seconds that's extremely good he, if Mundo ever gets picked into Kled, Mundo's losing. That sucks. Okay, flat damage reduction champions. Leona, whoa! Oh! Leona and Fizz will now be a little stronger against opponents with death by a thousand cuts type of damage patterns, like on hit and dot. Really? So Fizz is passive. Passive reduces all sources of damage. Damage reduction uh, against basic attacks. 4 plus 0 0.01 AP against all sources of damage. Maximum of 50% reduction. Huh. Yeah. My my thing is, why didn't they add this to Amumu? Or Ramus? Like, okay, Fizz, you can make the argument. He's like a trickster. He's like slippery. He's supposed to like be hard to get and shit but at that point you would like make him have the mechanic of missing like teemo or when actually um you had a thing oh god this is going way back before even season four Jax used to have a thing i forgot if it was a passive or an active i think it was on a z where he would eat and everything had a chance to miss even tower shots it was fucking crazy like Everything had a had a percentage chance to miss on him. I think Fish should get that instead. That would be broken though. But um Yeah, I don't know. It's really pushing it giving it to Fish. Leona I can understand cuz she wants to be tanky. I would understand giving this to tanks. Just taking less damage, but Fizz, I don't know. Okay, Leona. Um yeah, so Fizz isn't too much honestly. It's 0 0.01. So if you have 100 AP. Usually on a Fizz game, you might get like 400, 500, 800 if you're doing really good and doing a certain build. So 800, 
times 0 0.01 is 8, I'm pretty sure. So for a... You're getting 12% damage reduced from every single source. Before armor and armor comes into play. Interesting. And that's if you have 800. That's if it's like extreme late game and you're doing really good and have a good build. Wow, okay. Hopefully it's more for Leona. Let's see. So... W reduces damage by a flat amount, armor decreased, MR decreased, R no longer empowers basics. Wait, this is just a straight out nerf. What the fuck? Eclipse now grants A12, 16, 20, 24 pre mitigation damage reduction. Maximum of 50% reduction. Damn. And the armor is going down by a good bit. More armor than MR, but um, MR is going down also. Jesus Christ. Early they're not hitting it too hard, later they kind of are. Okay, hmm. Let me think about this. The main thing I dislike about this, she gains a lot of reduction. If it's percentage. If it's not percentage, then it's fucking stupid. But, um, it has to be percentage. There's no way it's not. But, I don't like how the ult no longer gives her the, the like, good autos. Huh. So they're making her more tanky when she activates W, but she's losing damage because of it, which I guess is okay. And she gains a lot too. But the thing is, Fizz always has this up. Hmm. I don't. I don't know. I'm actually curious. This seems like it could be borderline broken, especially on Fizz of all people. This seems pretty decent, but it's Leona. You're not really supposed to focus her anyway, unless you're Vayne. And if you're Vayne, this doesn't matter. Huh, okay. True Sight Champions. Well, these abilities already provide True Sight, we're taking them a step further and extending the True Sight effect beyond these champions' abilities, tethers, and into the complete CC. What? So, W now provides True Sight on rooted targets. Focused Resolve Renewal now reveals successfully rooted targets for the duration of the root as well. Okay, so they're just extending it. That's fine. Eternal Change now reveals successfully rooted targets for the duration of the root as well. Okay, same thing. Okay, same thing. This is like a small, honestly, quality of life buff. This honestly doesn't feel like whatever. Maybe it'll help you get a kill here and there, but if they were gonna die, they were gonna die not, f like, before the root. Very probably before the root. Especially with LeBlanc, or... Uh, oh, no, this is R. I thought it was Q. I don't know. This is more quality of life to me than anything. All right. Anti-mobility champions. Because mobility is such a prominent feature on many champions in this stupid game because every fucking one has to have it that's new uh we're increasing the power and number of anti-mobility options this could be ari Cassiopeia, poppy okay e now cancels and progress dashes bonus damage duration decreased so they're nerfing its damage but it could like stop you from moving what's an in progress dash like, what, if she hits LeBlanc mid-W, LeBlanc will stop flying where she's going? If you hit that, I mean, might as well, like, take him out. Because that at that point, you're, like, sniping him, but... See, I don't understand. These sounds like more of, like, quality of life slash tiny-ass changes. These don't sound like too big changes, honestly. Hmm. And her and Leona got, like, nerfs on top of it. All right. Cassiopeia, the queen of, like, shutting someone's movement down. W minimum cast range removed. That's huge. That's actually huge. Maximum cast range decreased. That's kind of bad. Cooldown increased early and decreased late. That's good. E healing increased. What the fuck? They're buffing her? Now reduced when poisoning minions and small monsters. Cost flattened ability. Cast now buffer. Oh, shit. Okay. I actually heard, because of this thing, the ability cast now buffer, I heard Cassiopeia is like broken almost. Outside of the flexibility and mobility, Cassio is getting too much out of just a few or one points in her E. So we're amping up the value at later ranks to encourage a full rank up. What? So they don't like how you max E last. So they're putting shit into E to make it better late. But you're still gonna max E last, so it doesn't matter. Here, let me not say that before I see what they're doing. 
So they buffed her health. Wow. They buffed her health growth. Wow. They buff nerfed her mana. Okay, that's kind of hard hitting actually. That's actually really bad. Mana growth is up. Okay, that's pretty good. Armor is down, so she's squishier. Minimum cast range. Okay. 700. That's not too bad. Cooldown. Oh, that's really good. Twin Fang. Uh, Cassiopeia has her 7% less. Oh, shit. When she poisons minions and small monsters. That's actually really good. Of her ability power. What the fuck? And then the cost is 50 at all ranks. So she's definitely worse early. For a fact, she's worse early. Hands down. Her late game is not only buffed, though, with the healing she gets from me and that she can buffer it, but she's going to have more mana in general and be stronger because of the W. Cassiopeia, I think, is going to be secret OP, and she's definitely going to be used in pro play. She has to be at this point. There's no way. I am Poppy. Uh, w bonus move speed increase, so you could stick on the target better. Move speed duration decrease. That's kind of bad. Grounds and slows dashing enemies. Didn't I already do that? She grounds them and slows them for two seconds. Holy shit. Wait, this is actually really good. Poppy's really fucking good now. That's actually really fucking crazy. Okay. And finally, champion fucking balance. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, I guess before that, these changes, like I said, some of them, like Karma, seem really fucking good. Some of them... Like, these are pretty cool, but very niche. These, I feel like, don't do anything unless you're against fucking Mundo. Or maybe Garen. Especially with Katarina. This feels like... Like, when the fuck are you gonna take advantage of this? Unless you're against the Soraka and you're ulting everyone. At that point, I could see it being good, but even then. Uh, this seems potentially broken. I kind of like this, but not really. These seem like all quality of life shits. These seem whatever. Cassiopeia seems broken. And Poppy is pretty good. Okay, Aatrox. Uh, what do I think of Aatrox? I think he's in a decent spot right now. I think they nerfed him enough. I'm actually curious to see what they're going to do. I think Aatrox is a person who has little to no late game besides being an annoyance. His early and mid game are where he shines. So let's see what they're going to do. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, wait. Wait. Whoa. Hold up. Bait? Okay. So they're nerfing his health or No, they're buffing his health regen by like 0.25, which is okay. But I can't believe they actually went through with this. This is actually fucking crazy. They took away Aatrox's whole thematic. Wow, they actually took away Aatrox's thematic. So, he can't res anymore after he kills someone. Before, he used to just get the res for free. Then they nerfed it to where he has to kill someone to get the res. Now they still think it's so much of a problem that they just took the res away. Holy fuck. The self-healing is going up by 10% early. 5% in the middle, and none at late. So his late game still sucks cock, in my opinion. But the cooldown is getting buffed. I think Aatrox is trash now. At this point, he's basically Riven that heals. Like, if you wanted to play Riven, he's Riven that heals with more CC. But not as good late. Riven, I think, is better than him late, honestly. This is actually nuts. Holy shit. The main thing with Aatrox is, okay, you go in there, you be annoying. Yeah, you might not be that good, but they have to waste it on you. And then if you get something for your team by going in, you get to res and get to be more annoying. At this point, you go in, try and be annoying, and just get clapped because of it. And, like, there's no reward for it. You're literally going in just to die, I think. And the healing isn't buffed late, so it's like... You don't have any more survivability than you would have before. You're literally just losing the res. They just, this is just a big ass nerf, holy fuck. And look, with the R, you could go in more often to kill yourself. This is so bad, holy shit. I think Aatrox, Aatrox might suck now. Okay, Akali. 
Uh, what do I think of Akali? I think Akali is getting past the point where she's been touched too much. I think she's getting touched way too much, and she's not a little girl, but it's still not okay. I don't know. I think they need to buff her at this point. She's getting too fucked with to where at this point, only the true mains of her that like love her are really going to play her, and then they're going to complain because it's not fun. I don't know. I don't know why the fuck they keep nerfing Kali. What are they doing? I'm not reading this whole big shit. Okay, so they're increasing her MR out the fucking window. Her health growth is going up. Her AP on her Q is going up. Okay, that's kind of scary, but okay. Um, and her W is getting a whole shit ton of changes. What is this? Obscurity to invisibility. She's now fully revealed by true sight effects rather than only her outline. Oh, shit. Wait, that's really bad, too. They just took out the thing that made Akali Akali. Like, obviously, Akali has, like, crazy burst damage if you could do it right. But the whole way of you doing it right was having the W as a security blanket. So, similar to Aatrox, actually, they went through the exact same thing with fucking Aatrox as they did with, with uh, Akali. At first, when Akali came out, her W could block tower shots. When Aatrox came out, he could res for free. Then they nerfed it. The W couldn't block tower shots, and you would get hit if you were in tower range. Aatrox had to work for his res. Now they realized, hey, we might have made a mistake still. They took Aatrox's res completely away, and they took Akali's shroud, what made it unique and good for her, completely away. Now if they put a pink down, they're gonna kill you, and you just get fucked. 75 gold counters your whole like setup in your kit for the most part. That's crazy. Holy shit. And it no longer extends. Oh my god. Wait, they're gutting W. What the fuck? It's restoring energy, but who gives a shit? At that point, it's just used to extend your combo, not to save you. Maybe that's why they're buffing her MR, actually. Okay, now that makes sense. But still, that sucks cock. And you can't even use it that often either. So you can use it once every 20 seconds, and then it could just get countered immediately. If they kept the cooldown the same, I'd be like, okay, then if you put a pink down, it's all right. Because, like, you have it up pretty often. But now it's like, holy fuck. Okay, E. Um, it now has an AP ratio. And it's total damage now, but it's, like, way less. Okay, this is useless. And the cooldown of R is getting increased. Wow. Okay, so they gutted Aatrox. They gutted Akali. Holy fuck. Alistar. What do I think of Alistar? He's pretty decent. I think all the supports are in an okay spot. If anyone comes up that's, like, wildly broken, I hope to see them here and then remember that they're wildly broken. Because right now in the support role, I think the most annoying people to me are... Just Lux, because it's Lux. Uh, Lulu, because a good Lulu will rape you. And Lorg, because the Q. But still, they're not, like, broken. I don't think they're broken. I don't think any support is in, like, a horribly unbalanced spot right now. So what do I think of Alistar? What are they doing? Uh, they're buffing his mana and mana growth. Okay, he just needs more mana. That's fine. That's a good buff to him. I don't see anything wrong with that. Alright, my good boy Aurelion Sol, who also got beaten with a stick after his launch because he was used in pro play too much. And Aurelion Sol mains are like insanely fucking good with this champion. But anyway, let's see what they're doing. I'm hoping to see buffs because no one else uses him. So let's see. Q max stun duration and radius growth per second increased. Oh. E max movement speed now scales with a whole. Ooh. Making larger than lane Q stars is so bad that it's just considered trolling. It kind of is. But it's definitely one of the cooler parts of Early on Soul's kit. Yes, it is. And should actually be considered a viable ability. Yes, it should. Especially in coordinated play. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Actually, wait. If they start buffing him for pro play, the pro players are going to abuse the fuck out of him. Okay. Oh, God. They actually made a stupid reference to the meme. These changes should help encourage more dummy thick Q stars. Bruh. Dummy <laughs> thick Q star. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm telling you right now, Riot has to have hired fucking, uh. 
Th thank you for that comment, Noah. Uh, Riot must have hired a fucking millennial or something to write these patch notes. Holy shit. They're trying to appeal. Alright. Q, maximum stun duration. How far did it go up? 2.25. Oh, it was actually really fucking high. Higher than I thought. To three seconds. Holy fuck. Wait, that's so good. After traveling for five seconds, the minimum stun duration is still really fucking low. And the star radius growth increased by 33%. So, it'll still hit the max stun range at five seconds. Or max stun time at five seconds. But it'll be bigger. So at five seconds pre this patch, the star would be like, like twenty dummy thicks big. Now it's gonna be like thirty dummy thicks big at five seconds. It's gonna be bigger given the same amount of time when compared to the old one. That's really good, and it's three fucking seconds. Holy shit! If you hit that, someone's dying. Especially like imagine that hits the whole team. That's a three second stun on the entire team. That. When it gets to a certain size, you just can't fucking avoid it. Holy shit. Okay, and the move speed bonus. It's now not based on level of the ability. It's now based on your level, which is actually fucking amazing. This helps his roaming so much because you max E last and you only get this move speed bonus at the end of the game. Now that you get it when you level up, it's going to be already more effective than E is now, and it's going to help you roam even more, which is Aurelion Soul Strength. They have massively buffed fucking Aurelion, and I love it. I really like this. The Aurelion Soul Mains are going to fucking clean house now. Bored. Well, we're only on the Bs. Holy shit. Bored. Uh, what do I think of Bored? I think he's a useless sack who dies in one hit and does nothing. I actually think he is one of the worst supports, if not the worst support in the entire fucking game. I hate him. So, let's see some buffs. Base health increase. So he's not as squishy. Okay, cool. His health regen was nerfed, though, Dan. I mean, he does have healing. but Magical journey, you now go through it faster, but the ally movement speed is lessened. Hmm. I think, I think he still sucks. Okay, anyway. Diana. Uh, bug fix on the passive, so I don't give a shit. Q nerfed W nerfed R bug fixed. Okay, so she just got nerfed. I think Diana's in a pretty bad spot, honestly. So I don't know why they're nerfing her. What are they actually saying? She has unintended power consequences. I've never even seen Diana in my games. Okay. Okay, Galio. This is way too much to read. Uh, passive. Colossal Smash's cooldown is no longer reduced every time Galio hits a unique enemy. Oh, shit. But they, they buffed the cooldown to 5 seconds. Okay. And it's doing more damage? Yeah, it is. Wow. Okay, it's doing more damage. Holy shit. Q. Winds of War. Nerfed cooldown. Buffed damage. Buffed cost. So you can't use it as much, but it does more. I like that. And W shield. Grounded. Galio cannot flash while char... What? Wait. Wait a minute. Galio cannot flash while channeling shield of Durand. This is ass. This is so ass. Okay. Galio is already ass. I heard from the Galio mains, ironically. Don't ask me why I was on their fucking Reddit. Shut the fuck up, phone. Don't ask me why I was on their Reddit. But I heard from Galio mains. This is what happened with Galio. He came out. He was so gay, he was OP at um, being a mid laner. So they nerfed his mid lane. So then the Galio mains, as like the poor fucking exiles of Jerusalem, had to like go and be in the support role and he was decent in the support role he wasn't that good but he was decent but they didn't like that even though in this patch notes they say oh we want to encourage other picks no they fucking like yeah bullshit you do they nerfed him there too and now he's at best a low tier support if you even want to play him support anywhere else he's ass and the only thing the only thing i feel that made him viable as a fucking support 
was his ability to flash set up something which other support champions can do without flashing. But if you were a Galio main, that was your option. Now they took that away. Yeah, you could walk a little bit faster to maybe do it or flash and then charge it up. But it's not the same effect because you're not having the full duration. This is ass. They're maybe giving him more damage to survive with the other poke supports and, and you know, the bot lane. But he's definitely not a mid laner still, and he sucks ass. Galio has been gutted. Aatrox has been gutted. And... Akali has been gutted so far. Wow, this is horrible. And they're changing Jin. Holy shit. Okay, Jin. Uh, w cooldown decreased. Root duration increased. Wow, they actually put it all the way to 2, and it's 12 seconds. Huh. I'm surprised they're not changing any of the items or build paths on Jin. I think that's Jin's main weakness slash strength. It's his only strength, which makes it a weakness. If crit items, aka IE, because that's the only item he fucking builds besides rapid fire, gets touched, Jin is garbage. Jin already isn't in a good spot anyway, because they fucking nerfed everything he used. And now he doesn't have a good keystone besides ones that like are decent on him. This is horrible. It's Boris now. <laughs> Oh, God. I never understood. Why are they calling Aatrox Boris? I, I don't get it. But anyway, okay, Lux. Lux? Holy fuck. Lux has been the bane of my existence in the bot lane. Back all the way up to Season 4 when I first started this game. I thought Lux was decently cool. I was like, okay, she's pretty cool. She seemed easy as fuck, which, spoiler alert, she is. And I'm going to tell you why I have a problem with this. So, apparently... People seem to think Lux support is OP. And I'm not going to lie, a good Lux can do damage. But at the end of the day, and I'm stressing this hard, at the end of the day, Lux is not a fucking support. Oh, wow, okay. I thought it had to do with the guy who makes League videos that was named Boris. Who made, like, the quirky and copter video. That shit's so nice. Anyway. Oh my god, the song's ass. Hold on. Let me, let me switch this shit. Okay, let's see if this one's good. Anyway, back to my complaining. Lux, after I realized what she was in Season 4, she's an annoyance and not a support. She tries to mask herself as a support with the W, and they even buffed it, so people thought, okay, now she really is, like, a pseudo-support. No. No. Lux is so fucking annoying. She's an annoyance, that's what she is. She's not good a good Lux can do damage, don't get me wrong. A good Lux is definitely good. But there are so many people who play this fucking champion that just suck ass and just play her because she's easy. And the thing I don't understand is she's so easy, but people somehow still suck ass on her. And they go that stupid aftershock though just to be able to survive in the bot lane because I asked Lux mains that I got in my game, why the fuck did you pick this champion, you piece of shit? And they told me, because it's OP. And I'm like, why did you take Aftershock? And they're like, oh, it's the only way we could survive in the lane. If the only way you could survive in the lane is taking a rune where you won't proc it to its effect, you're only using it to not die. Aftershock is supposed to be used for a tank going in to get tanky, yeah, but to also damage enemies with its explosion. Lux won't be on top of the enemy to damage them. The Lux mains told me they literally use it to survive in the lane. If you have to use that rune to survive in the lane, you're not meant to be in this lane. Get the fuck out. So I'm hoping to God they nerf the fuck out of this champion, get her out of the damn fucking bot lane, put her in mid lane to take up a mage's role, and then have her be ass because late game she falls the fuck off. I hate this champion. Remove it. Anyway, what are they doing? They're nerfing Q until late. Good. The cost? Good. Okay, prismatic barrier. Um, double outgoing shield. Jesus Christ. Same as outgoing shield. Return shield still stacks. The shield ratio is up. Maximum shield is 220 plus 0.6. Okay, that's good. And shield duration is 2.5. That's really good. Now people can stop saying, Oh, but she has a shield, she has a shield. It sucks dick now. Get out of my lane. And R, final spark. No longer refunds a percentage of its maximum cooldown when hitting at least one enemy champion that dies within 1.5 seconds. 1.75. Thank the lord. Holy shit. 
So the R is still pretty fucking low, honestly. But I guess it's something. The ratio went up? Oh, hell no. This is a buff. The R actually got buffed. Yeah, you won't have it up that often, but it actually does a decent damage ratio now. Holy fuck. Fuck this stupid-ass champion, dude. This champion sucks cock. I hate this champion. Needs to be removed. Get out of ball lane. Okay, Malphite. I have been waiting for these... I already know what they are for the most part. I have been waiting for these changes for like three straight patches. They've had these on the fucking PvE. And I don't know why they waited this long. I guess just to have content to put into the mid-season patch. Because maybe they didn't have enough. Okay, anyway. I hope they have the Wukong in here one too. The Wukong one in here. I said that like out of order. But um, I'm excited for the Wukong one. This one, I have my own opinions on. But let's see. So, I'm actually going to read what they say. Malphite is one of League's oldest champions. Yes. And we all know that Rolling Stones gather no moss. To that end, we're giving the Shard of the Monolith a quality, a giant quality of life update that should make his abilities feel more satisfying to use. Cool. So they're giving him visuals. Nice. He also gets bigger with armor. Nice. He has VFX on his passive. Cool. Improved animation on his Q. Nice. Malphite now spawns his rock 100 units in front of him rather than at his center point. That's actually something I noticed. When I used to play Malphite, his Q would spawn in such a weird way out of him that it would like... No, don't tell me Wukong isn't in this, man. Come on, cuh. Hopefully the Teemo one is then. Anyway, the Q, the Q always looked weird coming out of you sometimes. It would make like the little trail on the ground. And when it came out of you, it was like in a fucking like tizzy. But anyway, what else are they doing to it? The slow is getting buffed. That's good. And the slow duration is getting nerfed. That's not good. Uh, the W, Thunderclap. Ooh, I like the name. Sounds like clapping of cheeks. Uh, Malphite's next basic attack within six seconds gains 50 increased range. Okay. Deals flat damage plus scaling bonus physical damage. I hope it's an auto reset. If it's an auto reset, it might be pretty good. And for the next five seconds after casting, Malphite's basic attack cleaves enemies in a cone in front of him. So it's giving you a titanic passive. Physical damage to enemies hit, cost 25 to 30. Wow, they just nerfed the mana cost. So let me get this straight. The mana cost for the Q is still the same. Oh, what the fuck? Did I lag out of... Oh, no! Ah, I'm getting disconnected. Is the stream still online? Yes, it is. All right, nice. I don't give a shit then. Team has been removed on PB. They wanted to do team remains at 50-50. Damn, is it ass? Ah, shit. All right, well, we'll get to that later. We'll, we'll see about that later. Wow, that's actually crazy. So when we're only getting of the trifecta that got changed, Malphite, Teemo, and Wukong, the Malphite one. And honestly, I'm going to be honest about this. It seems like ass. The Q got a minor buff. I would say it's minor because it's not that serious. And the W, I don't know if this is a buff. It has to be a buff. If it doesn't give the increased armor that it used to, the passive. Like, I'm hoping this is stuff on top of what the old W is. If it's not, and they took away the passive armor that you gain, this is actually ass, and Malphite is ass. But, I'm hoping that's not the case. Is the, like, the damage isn't even good. It has shit scaling. Unless the, the cone and the basic proc off of each other. Like, if it's two separate procs, like, the auto, well, actually, it's only one auto, though. Hmm. This is ass. I feel like this is actually ass. The only quality of life is they made the W hit the whole wave. Uh, potentially. I don't know how big the cone is. But they made the W hit the whole wave. Because before, the W had like wiener ass range. It was like less than Tiamat. It was horrible. Now, it costs more mana and it might hit more. But it's still kind of ass. Like, you're using this to get the wave low to E it, I guess. It's not really going to help fighting champions or anything. 
I feel like Malphite didn't get as big of a change as I thought he would, or maybe Riot just portrayed it wrong. I feel like Malphite... Thunderclap is a new spell. Wait, so they took away his passive armor game. That's so ass. Malphite's... Okay, Malphite's ass. Alright, Aatrox is ass. Akali is ass. Malphite is ass. <laughs> Who else was the other one who's ass? Galio and Galio's ass. Wow, they are gutting a lot of people. Holy fuck. I, okay, like I said in the beginning, this is the second biggest patch of the year next to preseason. And preseason has the, the tendency, I'm going to say, to make things in the game that are broken. When the runes first came out, a lot of them were fucking busted and needed to be nerfed. So hopefully the midseason patch is just nerfing everything. So that way we'll be miserable for half a year, and then preseason will roll around. And then everything will be ultra buffed, and we'll have fun for like two months until the game comes out, comp starts again, and then they'll nerf everything for LCS to be somewhat balanced. So, hopefully we have that to look forward to, based on this trend. But anyway, Mordekaiser. I think Mordekaiser was OP. I think he kind of still is. But he's definitely not as bad as he was on release. I, however, do think he might need a couple more down tunes. So let's see what they did. Uh, passive base damage decreased. That's fair. His passive does a shit ton. E magic penetration decreased late. Okay. His yeah, his strong is insane, and his early is decent. No longer activates on Mordekaiser's core. Oh shit! If it procs via death's grasp, hitting three enemies after he dies. Wait, that's actually insane that they used to do that. He would be dead and you could still die to his passive. Holy fuck. And the passive damage is going base damage down, but percentage health is still there. So it's still going to do decent damage. Lovely. And they didn't even nerf it by that much uh, until late game. But even that, it's only 10. And the, the percentage of health is still there. So it's fine. That's fine. And the E magic pen is being lowered by 10%. That's actually huge. 25 to 15 is a big amount. I think if he gets any nerfs after this, it's unwarranted. I think this is enough. I think it's okay. But any nerfs after this are unwarranted. I think Mordekaiser will be in an okay spot, especially if he's decently strong. He should be decently strong. Okay. Nidalee. What do I think of Nidalee? I think she's ass. What are they doing? Base damage on the E went up by 10. This does nothing. She's still ass. Pike. Okay, I heard Pike was a problem child. So people will play TFT. Ma See, this is the shit, man. Riot knows they're going to make a shit ton of money off TFT with the little legends. So they want to force more people to go there. They're just going to keep nerfing like League until TFT is the only game mode we have. I think you're right, and I'm kind of scared. But... They like to put it under the guise of, ah, we want Let me, let me go to it. Let me go to it. Fuck, I have to go all the way up. Where is it? To give more attention and love to others. Yes. Yes. This is giving more love. M more, more love and attention to others. These champions, Malphite's never fucking used. He's not going to be used now if this update is bad. Galio is never going to get fucking used because he's ass. He never got used anymore anyway. Aesol will get used now, hopefully by people who just don't main him because that was the only people who played him. Akali's not getting used anymore. Aatrox's not getting fucking used anymore. So maybe their, their philosophy is misworded. Yeah, we want other people to be played, so we're going to do that by nerfing everyone who's played now. That's basically their mentality from what I'm getting right now. This is fucking insane. Anyway, Pike. So I heard Pike was a problem child. I'm expecting to see nerfs. I don't think he needs them. E now stuns non-champions. Wow. R deals reduced damage to surviving enemies? Now grants Pike additional your cut. Go to Wait, what? Hmm? Okay, so the E is just straight buffed. Because it'll stun, but it'll deal no. Okay, that's fine. And they even called it Danny Phantom. Look at that. 
Uh, and the R. Deals 50% reduced damage to enemies that survive it. Okay, that actually I can agree with. Uh, when Pike kills an enemy with Deathwind below, the last assisting ally, the last assisting ally and Pike. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Wait a minute. Wait, that's broken. Wait, it, okay. If I'm if I'm understanding this correctly, what this means is Pike will not only get gold for killing the champion that he kills with R, which he will then give the full gold amount that they died for to his ally, while also gaining it from the kill. He will also get that amount in the little gold pouch that he gives to his ally to him. So he's essentially getting two kills worth of gold three if you count the gold that the partner is getting for using his ulti his execute ulti on someone if this is working the way they're describing it and i'm thinking about it this is actually broken he will in the best scenario and the most common too have three times the amount of gold from a kill that anyone else would have gotten given to like his team two times the gold for him and then the kill for his ally that's actually nuts wait this is insane pike support is gonna be crazy if this is true that's actually scary but they nerfed it so if you don't die to it you can kill him basically or you you, you get off like healthier which probably will lead to pike dying because he's on top of you okay rise holy shit was the rework last patch or the... Okay, yeah, it was last patch. They're just bug fixing him. I'm not going over this. I haven't seen him used, so I think he's still useless. Um, or I don't even know if it happened yet. I haven't seen Rise. I don't even care about Rise. Okay, Singe. Uh, what do I think of Singe? He's also very niche. Only the Singed mains will use him, similar to Aurelion. A good Singed main will do damage. So what do I think? Nazga is Aurelion. Uh, Q recast timer increased brighter ability icon when toggled on the spell bar. This is the most useless shit I've ever seen. Get this out of my face. Oh! Oh, the Swain one is here! Oh, let's go! Okay. I'm actually really excited. I saw they were doing a lot of iterations of, like, the new rework to Swain. So I'm actually curious to see which one they, they settled on for the final one. Because I stopped, like following it near the end so swain soul fragments restore mana interesting and permanently increase swain's max hp q pier q pierces through minions no longer pierces through champions killed that's okay r1 drains all nearby enemies didn't it do that before R2 damage tied to R1 health drained, no longer modified by soul fragments, now castable immediately. Wait. Wait, I think Swain is now good. Wait a minute. I actually might play Swain again. Because Swain is fun. I think Swain is a really fun champion. Okay, let me see what they say. Swain's soul fragment mechanic gated players from simply accessing his ultimate. That's a lie. I think that's a lie. Making it a whole lot less satisfying when they're finally able to trigger it. What the fuck? No, it made it more satisfying. We're cutting out the decision making around when Swain should cast Demon Flare. Why? It used to be something you needed to think about. While also pushing the scaling fantasy that's appropriate to his thematics. That is true. His whole thing is like he plans for the future. So I guess this time... He's planning to just be unkillable. Health growth is less, understandably so. Attack range is less, I'd have no clue why. That's actually weird. Okay, Swain can no longer store up to five soul fragments in reserve. Okay, that's fine. Swain permanently now stores unlimited soul fragments, increases ma increasing his max health by five. Wow. Collecting a soul fragment restores four, five, four, five, seven of Swain's mana. So now it's really going to be big to hit the W. Now you like the W is the main part of his kit. So Q, Mega Drain. Killing a target no longer restores 2% of your mana. Oh! 
I forgot it did that. Wait, so now the only way he gains mana is from a stupid passive. Holy shit. Bolts now always continue through minions, but stop on impact with enemy champs. Hopefully the cooldown is still low. Oh god, they, they fucking nerfed the cooldown. God damn it. And the range went down? Angle between bolts is 10. I don't know what the fuck that even means, but... Wow. Wow, so you actually, I don't think, are going to be able to spam Q anymore. Because the amount of mana you, um... You restored with Q killing something, you did that often. So, like, after 1Q, 3%, 2Q, 6%, and it was up very often. You're not going to get soul fragments on the same level you're, you were killing things with Q. So you're overall going to be getting less mana, unless the amount here, which is, yeah, it's definitely more than the Q, but will it be enough? I don't know. This is interesting. Okay, R. It now costs mana. Damn, that's that actually might fuck some people at some point. Uh, bonus health. You gain less bonus health, but you gain more. Hold up. If okay, if this is working the way I think it is. So before he R's, when he just has the stacks, he gains their health. And then when he pops the the ulti, he'll then double that for the duration he's in his ulti. Wait, that's actually really good. And then Swain now drains all enemy units within range, including invisible units. Does he heal though? I'm pretty sure he heals. He better be healing for this. Okay, and R, the new R. Uh, the minimum damage, the maximum damage. 75% of the health Swain has drained during Demonic Ascension is magic damage up to a cap. Huh. Okay. Uh, what was the maximum damage before? Plus 20 magic per soul fragment. If I remember correctly, there was a maximum of 6 you could get. So 75 times 6, what is that? Plus scaling, obviously, but 75 times 6 equals to 450. Did it scale? It scaled terribly. So actually, this new one might do more damage eventually. Okay, this is good. I actually think this is, like, really good for Swain. I'm actually extremely excited for this. I will play Swain now and test him out. I'm, I'm curious. Okay, Silas, the person who was forgotten about... He, he got the... Silas basically got the Galio treatment. He got fucking raped by the nerf stick. It's nerf or nothing. Uh, so what do they do? I'm, I'm assuming to see buffs. Damage reduction on minions is going down, so that's buffed. Q detonation is going up, so that's heavily buffed, actually. Holy shit. Uh, the E on all magic damage for two seconds. Wait, what? Wait, so he just won't take magic damage at all wait wait a minute he shields himself against all magic damage for two seconds i i hope they mean he gets a shield against magic damage and not he just doesn't take magic damage because as a former vagar main if that's how it is this is broken uh, 14 seconds at all ranks, so is buff. Yeah, they're buffing him. Holy shit. The stun duration went down, though, which is fine. And then the R cast range. That's gonna fuck with so many Silas mains that the cast range is down by 100. And you can hold it for a minute and a half, which is a nerf. Cooldown. Wow. What? The cooldown got mega nerfed. Holy shit. Wait, I think Silas got mega nerfed. Unless they're putting enough power in his main kit, wow. This is actually like crazy. I think Silas is like ulti nerfed to the max rank of it, that it's 15 to 60, that's horrible. I think Silas got gutted again, holy shit. Okay, Tom Catch. oh my god, how many champions are they gonna fuck? This is scary. 
Okay, Tom, I'm not reading all this bullshit. Let's see what they did. Uh, abilities no longer deal bonus magic damage based on passive stacks. So that's a nerf. Abilities no longer apply an acquired taste stack. What? Wh Hello? What? They buffed his... Wait. On hit Okay, so they buffed his on hit to 2.5. Wait a minute. What the fuck? What? Wait, so the Q doesn't apply a stack anymore. You can't... You literally have to auto them three times to be able to stun or eat them. You can't, like, st You can't, uh, proc it with the Q anymore. What the fuck? Melee hitbox no longer hits enemies in a wide arc in front of Tom on cast. Wow. That was actually a good bug then for him. The cooldown is going up. What? What is this? Stunning an enemy with tongue lash consumes all stacks of an. <gasps> wow! And they nerfed the slow. The slow duration is up, but it's nerfed. The stun duration is up. Uh, okay, that's pretty decent. Wow. Okay, let me see this. Enemies are no longer nearsighted while devoured. That's crazy. Enemies are no longer stunned for 14 seconds after they were. That's crazy. The damage is nerfed. Wow. The damage for maximum monster damage is nerfed. Tom Kench can now devour and regurgitate blue sentinel. What? That's crazy. Wow. I am flabbergasted by these changes. E, thick skin, gray health da, 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 of 100% damage takes to 65. Holy shit. 75 at all ranks. Okay, so the E is kind of buffed, but nerfed. Cooldown, three seconds when thick shield expires or is broken. Wow. I think Tom Kench got gutted. They either want him to go support or nothing. Like, if he's not in the support role, he's not going anywhere. Holy shit. This is actually crazy. They are... They, they cut off his tongue. This is essentially what they did. They cut off his tongue. Wow. So not only can you apply stacks of your passive with... um With Q. You now can't combo it into like stunning them to going to eat them. You have to choose. Either you stun them or you eat them. Which at that point, why choose? You'd rather eat them, right? Or actually, no, that slows you. Wait, that, this is so bad. Okay, Tom Kench sucks. Holy fuck. I mean, in, in all honesty and in all fairness, Tom Kench was an extremely strong early to mid-game top laner. In a 1v1, he would almost never fucking lose, but that was compensated by his horrible ass late game. Tom Kench, I've seen it, cannot carry. He will get fed, but he will not carry. But he was extremely dominant early. So actually... Maybe they shouldn't have nerfed him this hard because they, they literally took the beating stick, made it a club, and beat him over his fish head until he died. This is horrible. My god. Ergot. Uh, okay, just quality of life thing. Yumi, apparently the new problem child. So, what are they doing? Uh, the shield is getting nerfed early by 30. That's fine. Yumi no longer restores mana when she hits an enemy. Okay. Alright, hold on, hold on, hold on. That is horrible, and I'm going to explain why after. Uh, Q, empowered damage has went down by 10, but has a greater scaling. That's actually okay. That's okay with me. But the cost is up, which is also fine with me. And then E, uh, the heal is better. Wow. And the cost is down. Okay. So, not as bad as I thought, but the passive. So, here's my idea of Yumi players, right? With Yumi players... do yeah, fucking Tom Kench is benched as fuck. They took the bench and rammed it over his head. But, um... As far as Yumi players go, right? The incentive Yumi had to detach from the ally... And, you know, fight the enemy... Aside from the shield, the shield helps the ally. The shield does not help Yumi... I mean, in the end, it does help Yumi because it's shielding the ally from death. Because if they die, Yumi's fucked. 
but it's not directly helping Yumi. So, l let me put this in the mind of like a troglodyte, right? Me Yumi player, me have no mana, me auto enemy to get mana to use spells and play game, me go auto. Oh no, me caught out because me go auto. Oh, me die. Oh, me have no mana. This is after the patch now. Oh, me have no mana. Me gonna sit on me AD until me get mana. Me no need to unattach because why? Me have no mana. Me can't do anything. Give shield to AD when me have no mana? No. The only thing that made Yumi players good, or not good, bad Yumi players, bad to decent Yumi players unattached from the ally was they wanted to go get mana now that it only gives a shield to the ad they have less incentive to do it because it doesn't affect them and they get less for doing it now this is horrible but it kind of makes sense now that she can't use q and just keep spamming it every so often and she gets a lot of mana regen in general so i guess this is just nerfing her early game for the most part because after she gets like one or two items she'll have enough mana regen to just spam it it doesn't matter. And the heal is better, so that's good. I, I think overall this is actually healthy for her and her champion. And it'll weed out the bad Yumis and hopefully just leave the good ones. Okay, ranged top laners. What the fuck is this? Um, Let me actually read this bullshit. Let me read what they had to say about Tom Kench. I'm curious now. Uh, We're taking a sweeping pass at some of the things that made Tom Kench unnecessarily frustrating to play against. That's true. No notably the constant CC that plagues opponents in lane. And he can now devour blue and red buffs because it seems like it could be fun. That's so stupid. This is retarded. This is so dumb. Okay, anyway, looking at this. So from what I read from this quickly, they're nerfing it because of pro play. Uh, so Jace is nerfed early, better late. Yeah, better late. This is fine. Uh, it actually not might not be fine in pro play, but this is fine in regular play. This has like no effect on us. Uh, Cannon. His AD is down, AD growth is up, attack speed is down, and bonus attack speed is up. Wow, okay. This really doesn't do anything unless you build AD, which you're not, so this is whatever. Uh, Nico! I actually like Nico. I hope they don't nerf her. I haven't bought her yet, but I want to. So her AD is down. That's fine. She's a mage. Her AD growth is up. Okay, so she's getting it back later. Attack speed is down. But not by much. Attack speed growth is up, so it's better late. She's better late now. Uh, Nico no longer loses her disguise when basic attacking enemy. Wait, it happened like that? That's stupid. This is actually a, a big buff to her. And shape shift. Shape splitter. Holy shit. Uh, the move speed went down. That's fine. She, I think she's a little too safe with that ability, honestly. This is fine. Overall, I think Nico got buffed. That's fine. ARM balance changes. No one gives a shit. Actually, I do. I've been playing ARM a lot recently. Let me see this. So nerfs. Corky, Alawi, Jarvan, Kled, Nami, Trimir, Urga, Polybear. No one I'll ever use. Buffs. Akali, Alistar, Jace, Kiana, Silas, Sentry, Talon, Trundle, Yumi. No one I'll ever use. Besides maybe Yumi. Uh, okay, the new death recap is out. So that's exciting. We get to see how really bad we are and what really killed us. Uh, show ally chat. You finally now have the ability to just not have a chat i might actually use that and bug fixes no one gives a shit upcoming skins i talked about those wow this was an extremely long fucking patch but it's to be expected it's the mid-season one but before we go let's take a look at the tft patch notes let me uh let me get this up boom here we go tft patch notes so twisted fate is now in He's a pirate and a sorcerer. I have never gone pirate. I like sorcerers. Hopefully this will let me do both now. Ranked. Ranked is now coming in. Cool. Attack speed changes. Basically what this means, nerf. PvE rounds are better for you. Now, if you don't get any items like I always do from the fucking minions and monsters, you get gold. So you're getting something. Uh, Pre-mades, whatever. It takes less XP to get to level 9. Cool. Ability targeting, I didn't really understand this. Shop is bug fixed. UI is improved. So, some buffs and nerfs. Um, Demon got buffed late, nerfed early. Elementalist got nerfed. Now, I, I 
used primarily elemental, so I'm kind of sad about that. Guardian got buffed. Gunslinger got buffed. For the most part. No, nerfed late. Nerfed late. Uh, Pirate got nerfed. Shapeshifter got nerfed. Wild got buffed for some reason. That's actually crazy. Um, tier 1 champions. The main thing here is Warwick got buffed. Vayne got buffed. Graves got nerfed. Fiora is trash, so she got hopefully heavily buffed. Uh, Elise got pretty fucking nerfed, in my opinion. Except for her spiderlings now proc the demon effect. Uh, and Darius got bug fixed. Tier 2 champions. Ari is bug fixed. Blitzcrank is bug fixed, I think. Braum, I didn't even read because I don't give a shit. Lucian is buffed. Pike is nerfed. Rek'Sai is buffed. And Shen is, wow, mega buffed. Holy shit. Uh, tier 3 champions. Aatrox buffed. Evelyn, I don't give a shit. Gangplank, I don't give a shit. But buffed. Uh, Katarina, bug fix. Kennen, buffed. Morgana, bu bug fixed and buffed. Poppy, buffed. Rengar, buffed. Shivana, nerfed. But somewhat buffed. Uh, Vagar, omega oh, buffed. This is basically the reason why I'm doing this shit. I don't know, I didn't even know it did this, but Vagar, if he damages a lower star champion, I, I'm i hoping this is with his ult. If this is with his basics, that's broken. But if he damages a lower star champion, so a tier 3 champion and below, I guess, he will do 10,000 damage more to them, which is insane. <laughs> like, this, it's, it's basically a one-shot at this point. He's one-shotting anyone who's below him, and I like that. And Volley Bear buffed. Okay, tier 4 champions. So, Akali is buffed and bug fixed, unlike what happened to her in the actual game. Bran is nerfed. Kogoth is nerfed. Yeah. Uh, Draven is nerfed. Nar is nerfed. Leona is buffed. Sedge is nerfed. Anivia is bug fixed. Or slash buffed. MF, I don't give a shit. Yasuo buffed. Okay, items. Uh, Cursed Blade is kind of OP. Uh, spatula is pretty good now. Frozen Heart is better. GA is better. Junso's is somewhat better because of the attack speed changes. Hextech Gunblade, bug fixed. Ionic Spark is somewhat better. Locket of the Iron Stellari is better, but I think still ass. Luden's Echo is better i think morello is better rapid fire is bug fixed especially on nidalee uh recurve bow is buffed redemption is buffed but kind of nerfed runans is nerfed seraphs is bug fixed static is buffed thornmail is changed i don't know if this is good or bad Warmogs is changed. This might be good if it if you get it early. Zeke's is buffed, but kind of nerfed as well. Oh no, no, just buffed actually, I think. Or maybe not, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, but other than that, pretty cool. Th those are the patch notes for that. Cool. I just mainly want the UI stuff. But anyway, now wrapping up this patch notes. Overall, this is a very interesting patch. I think they absolutely gutted a lot of champions. But at the end of the day, Morello has left the balance team, and we haven't seen champions get the slapping stick as hard as they did today. What Riot would do is they would chain the champion up, give them food every week, and then slap them with the stick every week. Now, what they did today was what Morello used to do. Morello used to just come in, pull down their pants, push them to the ground, and have their way with them, but leave. And after that, they were safe. The new Riot beats them over time. Today, they just drop their fucking pants. Like, so many champions got fucked today, and it's insane, but I like it. Jin was buffed, so that's good in some way, shape, or form. I really like the Swain and Aurelion soul changes. Everything else, I think, is stupid, except the Lux nerf. That's good. But overall, I'm actually happy and encouraging them to do more changes like this because these are radical, crazy, insane changes that goes completely against what they say. But I like radical change, especially if it happens often. 
because I'm not a pro player. So I will give this patch a 7.5 out of 10 Mark Merrills. I like it. I'm excited. I'm happy. I wish. But that's it. 7.5 Mark Merrills out of 10. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.